Hey, what is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Getting to ride on motor coaches as a kid when going on school field trips, the 10-year-old me had to really hold back on the urge to go and push all the buttons on the dashboard of the bus. If it wasn't for the fact that I knew I would get in a lot of trouble with my teachers and my parents, I would have probably lost the ability to control the urge to run up there and start pushing buttons whenever the bus driver got out of his or her seat. Hey, how do you fire the phasers? But even at the age of 21, when I started my CDL training with a bus company called Beck Bus down in Carverdale, Illinois, that inner 10-year-old was still there, giving me the urge to start pressing all of the buttons. Except this time, I had the satisfaction of knowing that I would soon be learning everything about these buttons and be able to push them all in order to operate the bus. Today, we're gonna take a look at the dash panel of a 2019 MCI J4500, and we're gonna go over what all the buttons actually do on the dash of the bus. That isn't gonna be easy. Well, you better find a way to make it easy, soldier, or I'm gonna start pushing buttons. All right. The 2019 MCI J4500 cockpit is the result of over a decade of fine-tuning and perfecting the recipe for driver comfort, efficiency, safety, as well as appeal. Over the years, with the evolution of the J model, the dash layout has changed several times. I did a video on how MCI's J model has evolved over the years. Feel free to check it out as I'll add the link of that video down in the description box below as well as up here. In 2018, the MCI J model received a major interior facelift. Not only did the passenger cabin receive an entirely new design that looked more futuristic and similar to that of a Boeing 737 MAX, the newer cockpit of the MCI J4500 was also completely redesigned as well, featuring a lower dash that gave the driver more forward visibility. Starting on the left side arm panel of the MCI J4500 is the switch to control the exterior lights. There are three positions, with the left position being off, the center position turning on the amber arched running lights, at the same time illuminating all the clearance lights around the coach, and the furthest right position turning on the remaining headlights. Turning on the running lights or the headlights will also illuminate the backlighting of all the switches as far as the dash panel for the driver. Moving to the bottom left, we have the 110 outlet switch. This will allow or deny the passengers the use of their 110 volt outlet terminals in front of their seats. An operator may choose to deny passengers the use of the outlets in the event that passengers try to plug in something ridiculous into them, such as a toaster or a microwave during their trip. These things have been known to happen. So the next time you're on a bus trip and you're trying to microwave your hot pocket or make a piece of toast in the back of the coach while traveling 70 miles an hour on the highway and the outlets aren't working, well, the driver's on to you. Next to that is the auxiliary heat button, which allows a driver in an extremely cold climate to pre-warm the engine prior to starting. This heater does not require any other systems to be on to use. Above that is a button labeled mud snow slash ABS diag. This switch has two positions. The upward position disables the traction control to allow the coach to get unstuck from low traction situations. The downward position of the switch will give the driver a diagnostic code of the ABS in the event that an ABS fault light comes on the dash. Then there's the tag axle lock switch that will disable the tag steering function on the coach. And next to that is the tag axle unload button that will dump all the air out of the tag axle suspension, releasing pressure on the tag wheels. This can be undone by pressing on the recover normal ride switch. This switch will also reset the coach if it has been kneeled as well. Following that is the raise rear function. This switch will inflate the air suspension of the rear wheels, thereby raising the rear end of the coach higher in the event the vehicle should become high centered or stuck on uneven terrain. Motor coaches tend to lean from one side to the other after they haven't been running for a while because of the loss of air pressure. The level center switch will allow the coach to auto level itself after the coach has been off for a long time due to the air suspension system not getting any air from the compressor. Above that are the driver blind switches. These allow the driver to raise and lower the front windshield blinds independently to block out sunlight. To the right of those is the transmission selector pad. This allows the operator to select drive, neutral, or reverse. There's also a mode selector which allows the driver to manually select what gear the coach is in. In case you were wondering, there is no park position. When parked, you would simply select neutral and engage the parking brakes, which is located next to the left knee of the driver. To the left of the shifter pad are the mirror adjustment controls. 
The upper switch controls the upper convex blind spot mirrors and the lower one controls the larger mirrors down below. Now from personal experience, on some coaches these are wired differently whereas the upper pad controls the lower mirror and vice versa. This can be confusing to drivers at first until they acclimate to what switch controls what. Moving on to the left dash panel where we have the controls for the cabin lights. On the 2019 MCI-J model, the driver has the ability to control several cabin lighting configurations. There's the overhead recessed mood light that illuminates the large oval panels on the ceiling of the cabin. This can be switched on or off by the driver. There's also a dimmer knob that allows the driver to control how much illumination the recessed ceiling panels can give off. Aside from that, the driver also has the option to turn on and off the spotlights, giving the cabin more illumination, as well as the night light to give passengers some illumination while not disturbing the driver's view from glare on the windshield. Most drivers keep the cabin completely dark during transit in order to have better visibility and reduced windshield glare. This is especially the case while driving at night. Should the passengers require more illumination during their trip, above every seat is a button that allows a passenger to turn on a reading light designed to illuminate their area only. On the dash panel, the driver has the ability to turn off the reading lights, which restrict the passengers from being able to turn them on. Over time, reading lights will burn out, and in older models, the J4500, it would be a total pain for maintenance crews to determine which reading light worked and which did not. Someone would have to physically walk to each of the light switches above the seats and turn them on to see which ones had burned out bulbs. Well, MCI engineers got smart and gave the drivers a test mode button on the dash. This button would illuminate every reading light in the cabin regardless of whether or not the passenger button was activated. This function would instantly allow maintenance crews to see which lights needed to be replaced. The clean mode switch instantly turns on all cabin lighting, bringing the cabin to maximum illumination. This switch is useful when cleaning and sanitizing the coach as it'll allow the cleaning crew or driver to utilize the full lighting options when needing to find all those cookie crumbs and M&Ms that have fallen into the crevices of seats and the floor. It's also useful when you're using the coach to record a YouTube video. In the event of the driver needing illumination without turning on all the cabin lights and waking the sleeping passengers, the driver has his or her own dedicated driver's light. This comes in handy when drivers are switching out in the middle of the night on long multi-leg trips. The driver handing the coach over to the driver relieving him or her would need to do paperwork as well as collect their personal belongings in the cockpit. Next to that is the panel light switch. This allows the driver to increase or reduce the backlight illumination from the dash panel switches as well as the dash screen. Next to that is the fog light switch, which activates a series of lights positioned on the bumper of the coach in the event of fog or for extra illumination on the road. On the next row, there is the switch for fast idle. This feature allows the coach to maintain a higher idle RPM when idling for periods of longer than five minutes. Fast idle can help prevent a condition called wet stacking, which is when a low idling engine does not atomize the entire amount of fuel being injected into the cylinders, causing the unburned fuel to mix with and wash down the oil from the cylinders. Most engine manufacturers, such as Cummins, recommend a minimum of 1,000 RPMs for extended or prolonged engine idle periods. The next switch controls passenger overhead blowers. Above each passenger seat is a vent that can be managed by the passengers sitting below it. Passengers can maneuver the vent slats to manipulate how much air is blowing on them as well as direction. If the passenger doesn't want any air at all, they can simply shut the slats to stop any airflow from coming out of them. On the dash panel, however, the driver has the overall control of turning on and off the passenger overhead vents. This switch offers three settings, with the top position being high, center position being off, and the lower position being low. Next is mirror heat. This switch simply turns on a heating element behind the mirrors to prevent icing or fogging of the mirrors so that the driver can see better. On the bottom row are the accessory power and ignition switches. The accessory power switch has two positions. First position gives the operator power to a minimal amount of systems without having to start up the coach. The next position turns on the rest of the accessories without having to start the coach, much like most personal cars today. Once the accessory power switch is set on the highest position, the driver will hear a series of clicking. The clicking are the onboard computer modules doing self-diagnostics of all the systems. It's important to not press the ignition switch before the diagnostics are complete. Start the coach simply to press and hold down the ignition switch until the engine is running. Next to that switch is the engine override switch. This is a switch that 
you only want to push in extreme emergencies. Modern day coaches are designed to automatically shut down to prevent damage to the engine or transmission if it senses that something is seriously wrong. Even if the driver is cruising down a busy highway, if the coach should run low on coolant or oil, the computer will simply turn the coach off. A driver that finds him or herself stranded in a hazardous location can push the engine override switch to stop the coach from automatically shutting down, just enough to limp the bus to a safer location. However, doing so will risk doing serious damage to the internal engine or transmission components, depending on the severity of the condition. Next, we'll move on to the steering column. A driver can adjust and tilt the height of the steering wheel by pushing on the lever protruding out of the sides of the steering column. The turn signal lever is just above that. Also on the signal lever are the controls for windshield wipers. Speaking of windshield wipers, the main horn is located on the end of the turn signal lever as well. The MCI J4500 has two horns to choose from. One on the steering wheel, like a regular car would, that provides a modest sound reminding the driver to please move. The primary horn at the end of the signal lever will make a more demanding indication for its intended individual. The steering wheel itself is built in with cruise control options on the left and engine braking options on the right with three different engine braking intensities. Above the engine braking button is the light interrupter. When pushed, it causes all the exterior lights to flicker. This is useful when saying thank you to traffic that lets you in or to indicate to someone else that they're welcome to come in in front of you. It's nice to know that there are features built in that are meant for being friendly. Of course, we are one big happy fleet. The new redesigned dash panel of the MCI J4500 features all digital gauges where speed and engine RPMs, fuel and other fluid levels such as DEF, as well as engine and transmission temperature readouts are all indicated on a digital screen instead of having any actual physical gauges. Now, the one thing I noticed and found fascinating while operating the newer generation J models was that the turn signal indicators were represented on the digital readout as well as a redundant dash panel layout. Now, I don't know if the digital dash screen was an afterthought after the original dash layout was designed or if MCI decided that there needed to be a redundancy for turn signal indicators in the event the digital screen should fail. If anyone knows the answer to this, please feel free to point that out in the comment box below. To the right below the dash next to the driver's right knee is a red knob that allows the release of all pneumatic pressure to the service door. This allows the door to freely swing open or shut manually. When lifting the lever back to the upward position, all pneumatic pressure will return and the door will once again be controlled by the service door switch. On the right hand dash panel are the luggage bay lights to be used in the event that passengers or drivers need to access the bays during the night or low lighting environments or in case the driver wants to enjoy a late night stack in the luggage bay. It's kind of like our break room if we're in the middle of nowhere. Next to those are the baggage bay locks as well as the switches to turn on the stairwell lights. There is also a security feature here. On the MCI J4500, unless the stairwell light switch is in the upward position, the ignition switch will not turn on the coach. Next to that is the hazard light switch, or otherwise known as four ways. And next to that button is the kneeler function that allows the coach to kneel for reduced step height. Below these series of switches is the media control deck. This controls volume. This also will select which media you wish to use, such as video, radio, or a device that's plugged into the three millimeter jack or USB. The right knob controls passenger volume and the left knob controls driver volume. Below the media deck are the environmental climate controls. Simply power on and turn the right hand knob to control passenger temperature settings and the left hand knob controls driver temperature settings as well as fan speeds for driver vents. The driver area also comes with two compartment drawers for storage. And finally, behind the driver's seat is the button to activate the fire suppression system. There's also a diagnostic indicator of the fire suppression system on the bulkhead above the left of the driver's head. Well folks, there you have it. That's what all the buttons do on the dash of the 2019 MCI J4500. Now, if the inner 10 year old inside you wants to go up and play with the buttons when the driver isn't looking, at least now you'll know what all the buttons do. Unless it's a Van Hool. Everything's in German. Folks, you can now support my channel in three different ways. I have a merch store where you can get your own Motor Coach World t-shirt, hoodie, and tank top with three different designs. 
kind of like the one I'm wearing right now. Get your merch by visiting bonfire.com slash store slash motorcoachworld. There's also my Patreon page. Feel free to go check it out, patreon.com slash motorcoach. You can become a patron for as low as a dollar a month, which is $12 a year. I will definitely put the link to my merch store and Patreon page down in the description box below. And finally, if you liked what you saw, click that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. That's free. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.